What's going on guys, Billy here, and the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is a pretty significant upgrade over that first generation Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, but there's only one difference between the two drones, and that is the camera on the front. I'm serious when I say that every other component and spec are exactly the same. We've got the same attachments that go on top, we use the same battery, the same remote controller, we've got the same transmission system, the same range, we've got the same top speed, I mean, the same exact airframe. Everything is exactly the same. So with that being said, what I want to do is go over that biggest change, the only change being the camera a little bit more in depth. But before we do so, I want to give a quick shout out to Anatom Geo Mobile Solutions. They are a nationwide dealer of GPS equipment, being drones, of course, and they're the ones that sent out the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance for me to make all of these videos on. So if you guys are interested in picking up this drone, go ahead and check out the link down in the description and hit them up to see if they've got any in stock. So just to catch you up to speed here, a little over a year and a half ago, I had some hands-on time with both the Mavic 2 Enterprise Zoom as well as the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Now I had each of them for about a month on loan from DJI and it was a really cool experience to try them out, but ultimately they kind of felt like a first generation product, especially the thermal camera that came shipped on the Dual. It was just way too low of a resolution to really be used quite frankly, for anything, even search and rescue, which is kind of tough because that's the sector that this drone was mainly targeting. You know, I really wish that I still had a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual so that I could capture some side-by-side -side comparison thermal images, some taken with the Dual and then some taken with the Enterprise Advanced to show you just how much better this camera is. But nonetheless, let's get into our deep dive here of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced camera. So much like the setup of the Enterprise Dual, the Enterprise Advanced camera system comes with two different sensors, one of which is a thermal sensor, while the other one is just a standard color sensor for shooting regular photos and videos. Now both of these are stacked vertically with the thermal sensor positioned on top and the color sensor positioned on the bottom. This entire camera system is of course mounted to the drone by a three axis mechanical gimbal so it stays perfectly smooth while hovering in the air, flying at fast speeds and if you're dealing with a heavy gust of wind. Now from this point on to kind of keep things a little bit more organized I want to split the video into two different sections. So first we'll talk about the color camera and then we'll move on and we'll talk about the thermal camera. Now, before I do so, I should mention that both of these cameras work simultaneously while you fly and capture images, and I've got way too much written down here on my script for something that really is so simple. Basically, just know that when you capture a photo or a video, two files are simultaneously being written to your SD card. One is, of course, the color footage or the color images, as well as the thermal images, and they're being captured simultaneously at the same exact time. And of course, within the Pilot app on your smart controller, you can also flip back and forth between the infrared camera as well as the color camera or you can look at a split view between both of them. Anyway, moving on here to the color camera of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, it actually features the same sensor that was first introduced in DJI's entire drone lineup with the Mavic Air 2. This means that we have a half inch quad bear sensor inside with an aperture of 2.8. To give you a base level understanding of how this quad bear sensor works, I've mentioned in my previous videos that it basically splits each pixel into four different sections that individually gather light, thus multiplying our overall pixel count by four. This means that the photo photographs that we capture are 8,000 by 6,000 pixels or 48 megapixels. We also have the ability to capture 4K video at 30 frames per second as well as 1080p video at 30 frames per second. The capture modes are also pretty stripped down with the ability to only take JPEG photos and MP4 video. I should also mention that there's absolutely no manual control over the camera. Everything is locked in on automatic exposure settings which can be altered through exposure value but you can't change the individual settings. The spec sheet for this drone's visual camera not color camera as DJI calls it is incredibly short, but to be honest, for the person that is purchasing a Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, they don't need all of those special camera features and camera tricks that DJI's other Mavic drones can do, right? They don't need to be shooting hyperlapses, they don't need to be shooting 4K video at 24 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second, they don't need to be shooting HDR video or editing raw photographs, right? I mean, this has everything that it absolutely needs, and to be honest, it actually might be better that way, because someone that isn't camera savvy needs to get this drone in the air to perform an inspection to use it for search and rescue purposes doesn't have the time to fiddle around with all the different modes everything they need is right there ready to go would it be nice to maybe have a little bit more features built out for the color camera sure i mean manual exposure could be really helpful in certain situations but at the end of the day you've got to figure who this drone was built for and it wasn't built for a photographer or a videographer now remember how i mentioned that this camera shoots 48 megapixel photos well that is a lot of pixels which is helpful in many different ways just 
looking at some of these example images here, blowing them up and zooming in, the level of detail that is captured is truly incredible. I'm used to seeing these highly detailed photos from my extensive time using the Mavic Air 2, but for those that are making the upgrade from either of DJI's older Mavic 2 Enterprise drones, you're going to be really happy with this bump in quality. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to have a huge effect on those looking to use the camera for search and rescue, as you're probably just referring back to the live feed for most of your use with this drone. But for those that are buying the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced for inspection work, the stills that come from this camera are going to give you so much detail to view and blow up on your computer when you're looking through your images and delivering reports to your clients. Now, of course, the video that comes off of the visual camera on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is also great. I mean, it's 4K video shot at 30 frames per second. It's filled with plenty of detail. I don't mean to downplay it that much, but I think the biggest upgrade that we have here in this camera for the Enterprise series of the Mavic drones is in the photo department, being able to shoot such high resolution photographs. But we've always had 4K video at 30 frames per second. So even though it's nice to have, it's not the biggest upgrade here when talking about DJI's older Enterprise drones. Now, perhaps this has come across your mind, maybe in this video or maybe before you even started watching this video. Why did DJI not come out with two different versions of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced? Remember, with that first generation of the Enterprise drones, the Mavic Enterprise line, they had the dual as well as the zoom. But this go around with this new generation of Mavic Enterprise drones, we've just got the Advanced. But that's because they combined the zoom portion into this camera with digital zoom. And even though, okay, it might not be as great as optical zoom, you can still zoom in pretty far. So when we're capturing 1080p video, we've got the option to zoom in four times, which I would say is better than nothing. I mean, you can still get a really nice clean image when zoomed in four times. Just know that you can't do any sort of digital zoom if you're shooting in 4K, which is kind of a bummer because I'm typically shooting video no matter what it is in 4K. So the fact that I don't have any digital zoom is kind of a bummer. But to get the furthest amount of zoom, we've got to jump over to the photo shooting mode, which allows us to zoom in digitally all the way up to 32 times. Now, is this image zoomed in 32 times any good looking? Not really, but for search and rescue purposes, for data collection purposes, for inspection jobs, it can be utilized in the most dire of situations when you can't get any closer to the subject by flying closer to it. I should mention though, that the photos you capture when zoomed in don't actually save to the SD card zoomed in. They'll still be there in their full 40 megapixels, uncropped, no matter what focal length you digitally zoom into. But regardless, it still is pretty impressive what you can do with that digital zoom in order to analyze things on the fly. And of course, because you've got all those pixels retained in those photographs, you can just digitally zoom in on your computer after the fact. Now, one last thing I want to mention about the zoom function built into the Mavic 2 Enterprise advanced camera here is that you can use this back scroll wheel on the smart controller in order to zoom in and zoom out. So what's great about this is you don't have to take your hand off the remote controller to touch on the touch screen. You can just zoom while on the fly using your finger here on this back scroll wheel. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover regarding the color camera, the visual camera, sorry, on the Mavic 2 Enterprise advanced. So now let's move on to the thermal camera. So despite the big improvements that we just covered, made with the visual camera, the thermal sensor is the real standout here as the resolution has been quadrupled from what was found in the older Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and now has a true sensor resolution of 640 pixels wide opposed to 160 pixels wide. So as you can imagine, the clarity of these images has improved significantly. Another big upgrade is the addition of the 30 hertz refresh rate. So now when you're looking at the live video feed or the video that you capture, it's nice and smooth. There isn't any stutter, which overall is more pleasing to use. I should mention that you can also digitally zoom here with the thermal sensor up to 16 times, but I'm just going to say it right now that it's not going to be your most used feature because the image that it produces is just too blurry. It gives me PTSD thinking back to the low resolution sensor in the older Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Now to quickly get these out of the way, the color palettes available when shooting thermal photos or thermal videos with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced are White Hot, Black Hot, Rainbow One, Iron Red, Arctic, Fulgurite, Hot Iron, Rainbow 2, Tint, and Medical. So there's a wide variety of choices that you can cycle through depending upon your use case and comfortability. Now hold up really quickly before we move any further, we've got to address an elephant in the room. It's the fact that DJI is no longer working with FLIR to develop thermal camera sensors for their Enterprise line of drones. Now that means that the Mavic 2 Enterprise advanced camera is DJI made from top to bottom, the thermal sensor as well as the visual sensor. And we see this with their H20 lineup of cameras as well made for the Matrice 300 and the M300. 
And look, I don't think that not using FLIR is a knock against this drone whatsoever. FLIR is a great camera manufacturer. It's a great thermal sensor manufacturer. But at the end of the day, DJI doesn't need FLIR to make this drone great. I think, and I speculate, that DJI was not using FLIR, but they were getting help from FLIR to kind of have people take their enterprise lineup of drones seriously. And as that FLIR name was tied to the thermal cameras, it had a lot of people establishing credibility for those sensors. But now that DJI has made cameras themselves all along, I guess they thought, why don't we take a shot at making our own thermal sensor? And they did a great job here with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, as you'll see here in a couple of seconds, because the images look great. But I should mention before we move on, because this is really important, the sensor, the thermal sensor, is radiometric. It stores all that radiometric data. So because it's not a FLIR camera, you can't use it with FLIR tools, but you can download DJI's new thermal imaging analysis tool 2.0, which is designed specifically for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Camera. Just a warning, it still is a fairly early build. And while all the functionality is there and it works really well, like changing the color palettes, adjusting heat tolerances, plotting points to extract heat information, and all the stuff you'd expect, I found it to be a little bit on the bug side. I am looking to do a deep dive into this software soon, but I figured that it was really important to mention here in this video because the previous thermal camera on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual was not radiometric, so it didn't store all of this data to be accessed at a later time. This further separates these cameras aside from the much needed upgrade in resolution. All right, so getting back on track here, the resolution of the thermal camera in the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced really is incredible, especially when you take into account the size of the camera itself, as well as the airframe that it's on and how small it is. Just to give you some example images to digest, for those of you doing inspections, you'll be really happy flying from a comfortable distance away from what it is that you're documenting. Even from 30, 40, 50 feet away, the photos and videos are high enough resolution to make detailed reports and overall understand what it is that you're looking at and what you're capturing. This bump in resolution, along with the ability to finally pull radiometric data from the photos that you capture, make the thermal camera a massive upgrade over the camera that was found in the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Now, because I don't still have that drone and I can't show you a side-by-side -side comparison that I captured, I'm going to lean on DSLR Pros here, this blog post that I found. Hopefully, they don't mind me sharing their content. Of course, I am giving them the credit. If you want to check out this blog post, I'll put the link in the description. But look at the difference between the same exact photo captured on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual and the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance, the thermal cameras. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's making me laugh just looking at both of these images here. But look, at the end of the day, <laughs> the quality difference is massive and the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Thermal Camera is a much needed upgrade. Now, of course, you can also shoot thermal video with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Camera. It still looks great and my biggest upgrade here, even though the resolution is a nice bump, is the fact that we can now shoot video at 30 hertz, so basically at 30 frames per second, whereas the older Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Video was shot at like 8.7 seconds. It was really choppy. It just wasn't really all that pleasant to look at, but now when you're shooting video, it's going to look sharp because it's a high resolution and it's also going to look nice and smooth. Now addressing inspection work with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Camera really is only addressing half of the camp because I think that there's going to be a large portion, maybe if not a bigger portion of organizations purchasing this drone for search and rescue operations. Now just know that I really want to make a more in-depth video about using this drone for search and rescue because I think it's a really important topic. So just consider this as like a preview or a teaser. To give you an understanding of how the camera performs in a search and rescue situation at nighttime, I laid down on the ground and wanted to see if I could pick up my body with the thermal camera. You could consider this cheating because of course I knew where I was and of course I'm laying right in the middle of an open golf course, right? The best situation possible. But regardless, the camera resolution is high enough to pick up an outline of my body at a height of 150 feet, which is really impressive. I can even snap in with the zoom feature really quickly on the fly and get a closer look at what it is that I'm looking at, or for a higher resolution, I could just fly towards what I think is my body. At 30 feet off of the ground, it all but confirmed what it is. In this case, it is a body. Again, I really want to go further in depth about how this camera can benefit first responders in search and rescue operations. So I just hope that this short clip gave you a taste of what the thermal camera is capable of during these types of use cases. And with that, I think that we've pretty much covered everything that you need to know about the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Camera System. 
system. It is a much needed upgrade over the Mavic 2 Enterprise dual camera system. It's honestly funny how much better this camera is, especially on the thermal side of things. And if you guys are interested in learning more about this drone, feel free to check out some of my other videos that I've got uploaded here on my channel regarding the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. And also stay subscribed to the channel to check out more content coming soon. Again, a big thank you to Anatom Geo Mobile Solutions for sending this out. Feel free to check them out down in the description below. And yeah, as always, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you later. Peace.